All right, so we've got Chester solo. I want to give a listen to just the raw. I've tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. I had to. So you can hear the gate doing its thing. You can hear there's a uh, headphone bleed. It almost sounds like they recorded it with the the monitors on. It's got a little more of a, a lively sound to it than just being headphones. Maybe it's a booth. I don't know, but uh, the raw sounds great. Incredibly well recorded vocal, duh, right? And uh, and then we've processed it, and I'm gonna break down that processing in this video. So let's take a look at the first plugin insert. It's an EQ. Is it necessary? It's in my template. It's almost always necessary for me. Not mixing world class vocals, and you probably can relate. But the high pass filter is there. The first EQ in my chain in my template for mixing vocals. I'm thinking subtractive. I'm thinking, what do I have that I need to pull away because it sounds like garbage? And let me get rid of that so that it enhances the good stuff in the vocal. Uh, what's that quote? You've got that. Uh, I, don't, I think it's unattributed. How do you create a statue of an elephant from a rock? Will you chisel apart all the stuff that doesn't look like an elephant. I just botched that completely, but I think you get the point. And so a lot of times this is going to be to cut, you know, some in the three, 400, 100, 200 sometimes because they get right up close to the mic. And so we get the proximity effect we have to pull out. But in this video, we're looking at how to mix incredibly well recorded world-class vocals. Shout out to the engineers who recorded the Linkin Park Hybrid Theory album. Uh, so moving on to the next plugin for me, I love the Kush Clarifonic. And this is my go-to whenever I'm looking to boost some top end into the compression. I like to hit the uh, the top end sizzle if I'm going, you know, Chester's got that, that I uh, said it in a previous video, that beautiful, dirty, raspy, the grit in his voice, that top end, it's amazing. And so I wanted to bring that out. We got Kush Clarity. If you've got a stock plug-in, you just want to boost that, you know, 10K and above, uh, the MOG, uh, EQ4 is great for that as well, the Airband, and on and on, right? Slate. There's so many, we're spoiled with tools nowadays, but I'm looking for that top end before compression because when I boost it to taste before the compressor, now the compressor is going to react to some of that and it can kind of prevent from getting uh, too spitty. The compressor is going to react a little more to that top end. So when you want that sheen, that top end in the vocal, I personally like to put it before the compressor. First compressor, this is a classic setup. We've got an 1176 into an LA-2A. The 1176 is set up to catch the peaks, and I've got it with a much faster attack uh, than if I were to hit this for 20 dB, or in a kind of a common aggressive rock compression, is just slam it. I would maybe back off the attack a little bit, all buttons in, 20 to 1, 8 to 1, just depends. I like to use that as kind of a tone control when you get hitting it that hard. But for this, I think we're 5 to 10 dB maybe on some peaks. Let's take a look, and let me turn down his uh, channel over here. I've tried so hard and got so far. Yeah, I mean, 3 dB, 5 dB right there. And then we're following that up with an LA-2A. Hey, I want to interrupt real quick and share that I've got a free resource for you. It's called my Vocal Mixing Checklist to help you deliver professional sounding vocals. Whether you're dealing with an average vocal recording, a poor vocal recording, or even world-class vocals, the Vocal Mixing Checklist is going to take you through my exact process and help you deliver vocals that fit the emotion of the song. Inside this free guide, you're going to learn when to use additive EQ, subtractive EQ, how to determine how much compression is needed to fit the vocalist and the emotion of the performance, when to EQ before or after compression, and then how to create your own signature sound using effects like chorus, stereo imaging, reverb, delay, and more. You can download your free vocal mixing checklist in the link in the description below. I've tried so hard and got so far. So pretty smooth without it. I've tried so hard and got so This is already compressed to tape coming to us, these stems, these multi-tracks. Um, multi-tracks, not stems. We're already processed, and uh, they sounded great, so I'm just flatlining him because next up, we've got a de and then we've got parallel compression. So de uh, how I like to set my de I will go find a section. I've tried so hard. I mean, look at that. We don't have to look very far. Tried so hard. So tried so We'll just loop that. I've tried, I've tried. I've Get rid of the I. I've tried, and then that S right there. I've tried, so 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 tried. You can hear that S sh sh coming through quite a bit more when I bypass this. Check it one more time. Here's in. I've tried, so tried, so tried, so tried, so tried, so tried, so tried. And it pops out and it can be irritating. I like to go loop a section with a couple of uh, S's. 
and DS like that. Sometimes it's necessary on the back of the chain as well. But moving on, we've got the DS are going. And then in my uh, template, two different ways of, to skin this cat. So uh, the first way, I've got my template. I've used this for years. I'll have the lead vocal on its own vo um, audio track, excuse me. And then I'll send into a bus where I'll smash the heck out of it. And we've got tried, 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 tried. 10, 15, 20 dB of reduction. Uh, again, fast attack, fast release for this parallel compressor. And I'm just smashing it. And then I'm gonna blend that with the fader to taste. What you don't want is this to take over the original track and become the main sound. You might as well just hit the original with a hard, fast, high ratio compressor. So this is to blend if I have it off. Tried, so tried, so tried, so tried. This enhances him, it pulls him up a little bit. Let me pull back right there. We'll loop a section solo with and without. So here's with it. I've tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. So it pulls it up. It does get a little louder, but it enhances it. And uh, this, again, it's just flatline to sit on top of this dense mix. So we've got those guitars, we've got the drums slamming, the beat, the elements of production, all kinds of stuff happening. What you want to stay away from, I mentioned this, is you don't want this to happen. I've tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. Now when you mute the parallel, you barely hear the vocal. It, it goes in, uh, down such a great amount in volume. You might as well have just used one track, smashed it with the compressor, and called it a day, which you could do. Totally could do. This, this is my workflow for years, and uh, I enjoy working this way. So moving on now, the lead vocal and that parallel compressor, these two tracks meet at, what well, you can see here, the lead vocal level. And so that's going to take us down here to the next track, and we're going to put it back here to... The volume and so now I've got the uh, semi compressed vocal just kind of tame the vocal the heavily compressed they're meeting here and if I needed to I would use some EQ usually I'm shaping the vocal a little more do I need more mid do I need more 1k 2k uh, do I need a little more top end is there something that's getting in the way do I need to so this is kind of a another instance where I'll look at shaping the vocal with some EQ. In this case, it was just gain staging, pulling it up. Next up is Waves Factory Track Spacer. If you missed it, I'll link above. I did a whole breakdown of how I use this, sending Mike as a sidechain into Chester's voice so that back here at the rap, when Chester comes in and, and holds out in the end, Mike is still going. I don't want my, uh, Chester to overtake him, and so we use that to kind of push him down. Watch you go. go. So when Mike's rapping, Chester's going to be pushed down a little bit. Check that out. Link above, link below as well. And that was that. I think I may have... Did I use... I don't know if I used this. Actually, yeah, of course I used it. I turned all these off so I could show you step by step. So this is now... We've got the vocal sitting right. We've got the vocal compressed. We had a little top end. We brought a little sheen out. And then now we've got a dense mix. I want him to cut through even more. And so I threw a clarifonic on at the end just to, to fit him into the track. And so that, you know, is going to do its thing. You get the, the mid-range bite and then you get that top end in the clarity. Here is with and without it. So here's with it. Watch, Watch you go. go. Tell you what, let's go out here where he's singing. I've tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. I had to fall to lose it all. Little warmer, little, you know, whatever. It's subtle, but that top end, I dig it. Brought him out a little bit more. There you go. So now the next step would be my chain of effects. I think I'm going to save that for another video because what I want to show you right now is Mike. And so on this one, I did not use that lead track into a parallel compressor into a lead vocal level. I didn't use that same setup. I've just done it here in the with the plugin inserts. But again, incredible recording. I didn't have to do any corrective EQ. We just I threw on a high pass filter. For those of you who saying you may not have needed it. I probably didn't. And I tried, so... I mean, you got a little bit of energy down there, but nothing to nothing to worry about. And again, Clarifonic, boosting top end, same exact settings, basically. Going into a compressor, same compressor, the fast attack, fast release. And I tried so hard. A little more aggressive with this. Little, wanted to get that kind of spitty vibe from it. I think we succeeded with that. Coming over here into an LA2A. And I tried so hard. Again, just a couple dB of reduction. These were already hit. Let's listen to his raw vocal. 
and I tried so hard. So you can hear the tone has changed now that I've bypassed the EQs, the compressors, the effects. What it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a what it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a time when I tried. And I'm just slamming him with compression. You saw the first two, the 1176, the LA-2A. I've got the de same exact process. What it meant to me will eventually be a memory. What it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a... And his S's weren't, weren't super harsh. Chester's were a little bit more uh, in your face, but... Uh, following the de we've got a parallel compressor yet again. I love the FG Stress. Big fan of this. I think the week or two after it came out, this was my go-to parallel compressor. It's lived there ever since. Now, instead of using it like we did Chester down here on this uh, parallel vocal crush here, instead of having it there and using a fader, we're crushing it and then using the mix knob. All plugins should have a mix knob. It's an incredible tool. And uh, again, we're spoiled with what we have to work with nowadays. So we got this going about 50%, hitting it pretty hard. What here. it meant to me will eventually be a memory. Of Without it. What it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a... I mean, it's already crushed. What it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a time. I did, there's something about that that grabby tone. I really like that. I've got 50% blended in. Moving on from there, that's where we set up the effects. And it's the exact same process for both vocals, just a little bit different way of doing it. 